Minister reminds journalists the duty to spark ideas for nation building. Ex UK Prime Minister resigns from the House of Commons. Good afternoon and salam Malaysia Madani. I'm Jessica Lee and you're watching Updates at Noon. The journalist and the media fraternity have a duty not only to report authentic news but also to become guides and initiators of ideas in building the nation. According to Prime Minister Datuk Sri Anwar Ibrahim, media practitioners should feel free to share their views and give constructive criticisms to the country's leadership towards better governance. He said scholars as well as journalists should be free to criticise the country's leadership and have differences of opinion with them. Rakyat, gulungan sarjana, warga universiti dan wartawan harus betul-betul merasakan bahawa mereka bebas berkarya, bebas menegur, bebas mengkritik, bebas berbeza pandangan dengan apa yang kita anggap jalur tetap ataupun sikap dan peranan dan pandangan pimpinan negara. The Premier said this when delivering a speech at the 2023 Malaysian Press Night in conjunction with the MPI Petronas Malaysian Journalism Awards HKM 2022 last night. The Prime Minister said the challenge of the hour is to re-elevate Malaysia's capabilities as a democratic country based on the concept of Malaysia Madani, adding democratic freedom can only be elevated through fresh discourse driven by journalists. Now also present were Communications and Digital Minister Fami Fazil and his deputy Tony Cheng, Malaysia Press Institute MPI Chief Executive Officer Dr. Chamil Waria and Petronas Executive Vice President Lisa Mustafa. Meanwhile, Datuk Dr. Chamil said for the 2022 edition of the MPI Awards, 368 entries were submitted compared to 350 in 2021. He also said Petronas has agreed to sponsor HKM for the next three years, which will also include a new category involving radio and television. Now, at the same event, Communications and Digital Minister Fami Fazil said he hopes the recognition given to journalists and media personnel could act as a boost and encourage them to perform their duties better. Kerana antara lain kita uh, menghargai dan uh, mengiktiraf uh, bukan hanya tokoh-tokoh di kalangan para wartawan, tapi juga hasil kerja yang uh, seharusnya menjadi contoh dan ikutan buat para wartawan yang lain. Uh, dan uh, bila uh, Malaysian Press Institute ataupun MPI mengusahakan, uh, kita lihat uh, memang fokusnya adalah kepada bukan hanya kualiti kewartawanan, uh, tapi juga integriti. Uh, dan saya harap ini akan menja dapat menjadi ikutan. The minister added that KKD, Malaysian Press Institute MPI, as well as other agencies will continue to look for space and opportunities to ensure that media-related issues, especially ethics, can be improved. The Ministry of Home Affairs, or KDN, held an engagement session with Islamic scholars and religious teachers in Parliament in its effort to prepare a proposal to improve the administrative directive on the use of the word Allah. According to KDN, it is in line with the order of the Yang Putuan Agung Al Sultan Abdullah Riayatuddin Al Mustafa Bilal Shah on the 5th of June for the government to harmonize the current issue and place the use of the word Allah in the right context. They will approach this issue by taking into account the national security, the benefit of the Ummah, as well as His Majesty's position and the position of other Malay rulers as heads of Islam. 
The participants were given the opportunity to give suggestions to put an end to rising issues regarding the control and enforcement of relevant publications in Malaysia within the scope of maintaining the existing policy regarding the use of the Allah word. It said more engagement sessions will be held with other stakeholders, particularly with key opinion leaders, state Islamic religious councils and the Department of Islamic Development of Malaysia or JAKIM to get holistic recommendations and coordination over the matter. The Women, Family and Community Development Ministry or KPWKM will establish a database of the list of registered babysitters to help parents to choose daycare centres and registered babysitters for their children. Its Minister Datsri Nasi Shukri said that at the moment there is no platform or referral centre for parents to choose their desired nanny. Without saying when the database might be realised, she said the effort is still in the planning stage. Death Screen Nancy also said the ministry will hold 105 engagement sessions with local authorities or PBT nationwide this year to find a solution to facilitate the registration of babysitters interested in running nurseries. According to the minister, she often receives complaints from entrepreneurs who want to operate legally and be registered but face bureaucratic and technical problems from PBTs. Tetapi uh, kita pun uh, kena mencari jalan supaya ianya boleh uh, kita bantu untuk uh, mempercepatkan proses itu. Cuma kalau kami di sini, uh, kalau CKM, uh, untuk uh, meluluskan pendaftaran, cuma 30 hari. Tetapi sebelum kita dapat mendaftar, dia perlu menepati ke, uh, apa nama syarat-syarat uh, daripada PBT. Jadi itulah yang menjadi uh, menjadi apa nama cabaran dan juga kekangan. As of December last year, it was found that a total of 1,080 nurseries were not registered with the Social Welfare Department or JKM. The Bank Negara of Malaysia or BNM yesterday announced that the Yani Pertuan Agong has consented to the appointment of Dato Sheikh Abdul Rashid Abdul Ghaffur as governor for a five-year term effective 1st of July 2023 to 3rd of June 2028. In a statement, BNM said Dato Sheikh Abdul Rashid will assume the position of governor from Tan Sri Nur Samsia Muhammad Yunus who will complete her five-year term on the 30th of June. The BNM board also expressed its appreciation to Nur Samsia for her contributions and service to the bank and country. The board said Tan Sri Nur Samsia has demonstrated exemplary leadership and exceptional commitment in discharging her responsibility as governor and chairperson of the board. The board is also confident that with Datu Abdul Rashid's extensive experience and proven track record in the bank, he will drive the bank further forward and continue its tradition of excellence in advancing the interests of the country. Dato Abdul Rashid joined the Central Bank in 1988, rising to the position of Deputy Governor in 2016. He is currently a member of the Monetary Policy Committee and Financial Stability Committee, a position he has held since 2015. He also played key roles in the development and implementation of the Financial Sector Master Plan and Financial Sector Blueprints. Time house buyers will continue to enjoy a 100% stamp duty exemption. Dian Pertuan Agong Al Sultan Abdullah Riayatuddin Al Mustafa Bilal Shah and Raja Permaisuri Agong Tunku Aziza Amina Maimuna Iskandaria today attended the trooping of the colour ceremony at Dataram Pahlawan Negara in Putrajaya. The Majesties arrived at 8.30am as the Negaraku National Anthem was played with five armed forces aircraft bearing the Jalur Gemilang National Flag performed a fly past overhead led by Major Muhammad Husni Muhammad Tarmizi of the Royal Malaysian Air Force. Simultaneously, a 21-gun salute was fired by the 41st Battalion Royal Artillery Regiment led by Lieutenant Colonel Muhammad Azri Chaywil.
Al Sultan Abdullah then inspected the Guard of Honor, mounted by 57 officers and 862 personnel from the three MAF wings led by the commanding officer of the 12th Battalion of the Royal Malay Regiment, Lieutenant Colonel Muhammad Azmi. Azamri Abdullah. Now the king then took the royal salute as the five MAF aircraft performed another fly past before leaving at 9:30 a.m. The ceremony was also attended by Prime Minister Datuk Sri Anwar Ibrahim and his wife Datin Sri Dr Wan Aziza Wan Ismail, Deputy Prime Minister Datuk Sri Fadila Yusof, Armed Forces Chief General Tan Sri Effendi Buang, as well as Defence Minister Datuk Sri Muhammad Hassan. Trooping the colours is a demonstration of respect on and ceremonial pledge of allegiance by the three services of the armed forces to the king and the country. The first time house buyers will continue to enjoy a 100% stamp duty exemption for purchases not exceeding 500,000 ringgit via the Malaysian Home Ownership Initiative or iMilik or Aimiliki, as provided for under Budget 2023. Now, according to Finance Ministry, or MOF, a 75% stamp duty exemption will also be given for first-time home ownership for houses priced at between 500,000 ringgit and 1 million ringgit and the, under the Aimiliki initiative. In a statement, MOF said this stamp duty exemption applies to sale and purchase agreements executed from the 1st of June 2022 until the 31st of December 2023. It said the exemption comes under the Home Ownership Programme, or HOPE, where first-time buyers are given stamp duty exemption on transfer documents and loan agreements. The move is aimed at encouraging home ownership among the people. The MOF also said the stamp duty on instruments of transfer of ownership of real estate by way of love and affection between parents and children and between grandparents and grandchildren is also fully exempted, limited to the first 1 million ringgit of the property's value. The remaining balance of the property's value is subject to the ad valorem duty rate with a 50% remission of the stamp duty chargeable. It added that this stamp duty exemption applies to real estate transfer documents executed from the 1st of April 2023. Now, in a fit of jealousy, an Indian national brutally stabbed his girlfriend 18 times with a paring knife in a condominium unit in Kalana Jaya last week. Pataling Jaya District Police Chief ACP Mama Fakhruddin Abdul Hamid said the details came to light when a 30-year-old suspect was caught trespassing on the train track by a, by a express rail link or ERL auxiliary police team a day after the incident. Kes bunuh melibatkan mangsa satu perempuan warga negara asing, iaitu warga negara India. Pada 13 Jun 2023, jam lebih kurang 4.50 petang, pasukan keselamatan dari Express Rail Link Salak Selatan telah menahan satu lelaki warga asing yang telah menceroboh masuk ke landasan. He said the suspect was then handed over to the police and on further interrogation, he confessed to killing his 40-year-old girlfriend. According to ACP Fakhruddin, the suspect killed his lover out of jealousy because he believed that the woman was having an affair with their housemate. A police team then went to the condominium unit to find six foreigners, including a woman and a local man there. ACP Fakhruddin said the suspect then led the police to the victim's room where a woman was found lying lifeless in a pool of blood. A knife believed to be the murder weapon was also found nearby. The suspect, along with seven other occupants of the condominium unit, were remanded for seven days since the 4th of June to assist in the investigation under Section 302 for murder. Now, a baby girl who is just several days old was found abandoned in front of the main entrance of Masjid An-Nahija Sungai Kepar near Semangal, Perak, yesterday. Korean Police Chief Superintendent Juna Yusuf said Worshippers stumble upon the baby who was healthy and wrapped in a piece of cloth. 
In a statement, Superintendent Juna said a CCTV recording shows a woman believed to be a Malay entering the mosque compound and abandoning the baby there at 11.58 a.m. He urged anyone with information on the case to contact the police and the woman in the video recording to report to the Korean District Police Headquarters to help in investigations. He added that the case is being investigated under Section 317 of the Penal Code for abandonment of an infant. On the foreign front, four children found alive after five weeks went missing. Stay tuned. Former British Prime Minister Boris Johnson abruptly quit as a member of Parliament on Friday in a furious protest against lawmakers investigating his behaviour, reopening deep divisions in the ruling Conservative Party ahead of a general election expected next year. Now, Johnson had been under investigation by a parliamentary inquiry looking into whether he misled the House of Commons about lockdown breaking parties in Downing Street during the COVID-19 pandemic. After Johnson received a confidential letter from the committee, he accused lawmakers investigating him of acting like a kangaroo court and being determined to end his political career. Accusing the committee of mounting a political hit job, Johnson said in a statement he was being forced out by a tiny handful of people with no evidence to back up their assertions. Parliament's Privileges Committee, the main disciplinary board for lawmakers, had the power to recommend Johnson to be suspended from Parliament. If the suspension is more than 10 days, voters in his constituency could have demanded he stood for re-election to continue as their representative. Now, Johnson hinted that he could return to politics, declaring he was leaving Parliament for now. The United Nations on Friday said that UN personnel cannot be made persona non grata after Sudan declared UN Special Envoy to Sudan, Volker Pertis, unwelcome in the country. The Sudan's army, led by General Abdel Fattah al-Burhan and the country's paramilitary rapid support forces, began fighting eight weeks ago, sparking a major humanitarian crisis. They agreed to a nationwide 24-hour ceasefire from Saturday morning, U.S. and Saudi Arabian mediators said on Friday. Now, Sudan said on Thursday it had notified the United Nations that Pertis was persona non grata. Now, Borhan had previously expressed his disapproval of the envoy. UN spokesman Stefan Dujaric said the Secretary General recalls that the doctrine of persona non grata is not applicable to or in respect of United Nations personnel and its invocation is contrary to the obligations of states under the Charter of the United Nations. Now, four children from an indigenous community in Colombia were found alive more than five weeks after the plane they were traveling in crashed in thick jungle. Colombia's president, Gustavo Petro, said the children are now receiving medical attention and will travel to Bogota or back home to Via Vicinio once doctors are sure that they are fit physically and mentally. The children were rescued by the military with help from local indigenous communities near the border between Colombia's Caqueta and Guaviera provinces close to where the small plane had crashed. A photo shared by Colombia's military showed a group of soldiers with the four children in the middle of the jungle. The plane, a Cessna 206, was carrying seven people en route between Araracuara in Amazonas province and San Jose. Jose del Guevara, where it issued a May Day alert due to engine failure in the early hours of the 1st of May. Three adults, including the pilot, died as a result of the crash and their bodies were found inside the plane. The four children, aged 13, 9 and 4, as well as now a 12-month-old baby, survived the impact. 
Petro initially reported that children had been found on the 17th of May in a message on Twitter, but later deleted the post, saying the information was unconfirmed. Rescuers supported by search dogs had previously found discarded fruit the children ate to survive, as well as improvised shelters made with jungle vegetation. JDT beat nine men Tranganu to continue dominance in the league. That and more in our sports segment. Now kicking off our sports segment today, two red cards received by Trungano FC overshadow a spectacular acrobatic goal worthy of winning any match from Fernando Forestry to see Johor Darutagzim JDT extend their impressive record after a 3-1 victory over the hosts last night. The match started in grand fashion as more than 10,000 fans had filled the Sultan Mizan Zain al Bidin Stadium in Gongbada, Kuala Trungano. Now Both teams were evenly matched for the first 20 minutes before Forestry produced a moment of magic to break the deadlock with a spectacular acrobatic kick from outside the box, stunning the home crowd. Awakened by the goal, Trungano equalised eight minutes later through a free kick taken by import Sony Nordi. However, Nordi went from hero to zero when his tackle on Arif Ayman Mohamed Hanapi saw JDT awarded a penalty, which Bergson da Silva put away to restore the lead well into the first half injury time. Into the second half, the home team suffered a severe blow when Montenegro import Argzim Rezovic was axed for a rash tackle on Forestry in the 52nd minute, while substitute Eva Mahmoud was given the marching orders in the 74th minute for an elbow on Mohamed Feroz Baharudin. Now down to nine men, it was inevitable that JDT punished the home team when Endrick Dos Santos made it 3-1 well into injury time of the second half. Meanwhile, at the Daro Makmo Stadium in Kuantan, Sri Pahang FC fought back from a 2-0 deficit to emerge 4-3 winners over Negri Sembilan. A Sri Pahang skipper, Kapar Sherman, was the toast of his team when he struck the winner well into injury time after 90 minutes had ended. Negri Sembilan, despite playing away from home, took the lead in the 8th minute through Harold Margulon, while Mohamed Sharil Fikri Mohamed Fauzi added the second in the 15th minute. Now, Pahang managed to reduce deficit from penalty spot through Stefano Brundo in the 23rd minute, but Negri Sambilan quickly restored order when import Anselmo Aruda da Silva scored his team's third goal a minute later. Pahang coach Fandi Ahmad brought in Davy Rowley to beef up the fledging strike force and the move quickly paid dividends when Pahang's third goal in the 79th minute threw Brundo in the 90th minute while Sherman made sure of all three points with an injury time goal. The Super League continued to be ruled by JDT after having collected 42 points, while Sri Pahang remained in fourth spot with 28 points, followed by Trungano in seventh place with 20 points, while Negri Sambilan remained in ninth spot with 18 points. Malaysia Cup 2021 champions Kuala Lumpur KL City FC yesterday officially, officially announced Communications and Digital Minister Fami Fazil as the club's latest patron. In an announcement through KL City's official Instagram post, the club said they look forward to the positive impact that Fami will bring to the table. It added, as a dedicated fan of the team and also one of KL's members of parliament, they are confident that the Lumba Pantai MP will bring valuable insights and expertise to the organisation. Now, last Wednesday, Fami agreed to be KL City's patron after receiving the offer from Kuala Lumpur Football Association or KLFA President Khalid Abdul Samad. Previously, RL MP Datuk Sri Dr. Shahidan Kasim had been appointed as KL City's patron in August last year after former Communications and Multimedia Minister Tan Sri Anwar Musa resigned from the post. Moving on to European football scene, Manchester City must overcome more than just a formidable Inter Milan defence as they seek to win the Champions League for the first time tomorrow morning. Now, Pep Guardiola's side are favourites in the Atatok Olympic Stadium, 
not only to finally get their hands on a trophy that has proved elusive, but also to complete a treble this season. Guardiola bidding to become the first manager to win two trebles, having claimed the La Liga title, Copa del Rey and Champions League with Barcelona in 2009, said he is prepared as Inter might have more than one or two tricks up their sleeve. Muchísimas cosas, un equipo habituado a no solo a defender, hay una teoría de que el, los equipos italianos solo defienden, evidentemente saben defender muy bien, para ellos ir 0-0 es como si van ganando, pues no se ponen nunca ansiosos, pero tienen, tienen con un portero en la salida, tanto Bastoni como Acherbi uh, o Darmian con Onana son muy muy efectivos y luego tienen la capacidad para contactar muy muy bien con sus atacantes, tanto Lautaro, Dzeko, Lukaku, Correa, si juegan tiene la capacidad de sostener este balón. Normalmente los balones largos, 10 tu, 7 tu 10, 8 tu 10, los pierden, estos no. El Inter tiene la capacidad de tenerla y ahí es donde son peligrosos. Pues a partir de ahí te atacan por dentro, te giran el juego, te atacan otra vez. Ya. City's playmaker Kevin De Bruyne describes City's pursuit of the Champions League as part dream, part obsession, having fallen in the final to Chelsea in 2021 and to Real Madrid in the semi-final last season. Guardiola said the right proportion of obsession and desire is healthy, but he also urged his men to remain patient if the score line remains goalless for longer than expected. Meanwhile, Inter Milan Simon Inzaghi are ready to shock the football world by beating Manchester City, who are the favourites for the clash as they chase the treble, having won their fifth Premier League title in six years and the FA Cup. However, Inzaghi's side are in good form themselves, having won 11 of their last 12 matches in all competitions. The Italian labelled City as the strongest team in the world, but said that his players were ready to cause an upset. Ma noi chiaramente sappiamo domani il tipo di partita che, che, do, che dovremo fare. Indubbiamente sappiamo che il Manchester City è la squadra in questo momento più forte al mondo. Lo ha dimostrato anche nelle pochissime sconfitte che hanno avuto. Ma noi sappiamo il percorso che abbiamo fatto. Siamo orgogliosi di essere arrivati fin qua e faremo di tutto per fare una partita di una concentrazione incredibile sapendo che dovremo limitare gli errori, fare, fare il massimo perché affrontiamo una squadra molto molto forte. Inter, who have won the European Cup three times before, have already secured the Coppa Italia and Supercoppa Italiana this season and will use their experience of winning tough against City. And that's it for updates at noon. In our leading story today, Prime Minister reminds journalists duty to spark ideas for nation building and give constructive criticisms to the government. Do join us again at 8.30 p.m. tonight for latest news. Till then, I'm Jessica Lee. Thank you for watching. Malaysia Madani, Teka Perpaduan, Penuhi Harapan.